Hi, this is TJ Sullivan, and I'm coming to you from my office in Denver, Colorado. And this is part of the Ask Catalyst series, where some of the uh, change agents of Catalyst Agency are answering some of your questions. So the question that is put to me is from Noah at Case Western Reserve University. And Noah says, TJ, what are some ways to combat overcommitment and burnout on campus? Noah, I'm going to assume you're asking for how student leaders can not burn out and not overcommit. Uh, and so let's first, before we answer that question, let's talk about what are the reasons why student leaders overcommit and burn out. Uh, a variety of reasons, I'm probably not even getting all of them, but the first ones that come to my mind is that a lot of top third student leaders, and I'm going to use a lot of my motivating the middle type uh, lingo here, but a lot of the top third student leaders on campus uh, really get a lot of validation from looking busy. So if you, the way you feel important on campus, the way you feel like you're, you know, you're vital to the campus and that you're cool and interesting is because you're busy all the time, well then you're going to be your own worst enemy. You're going to constantly be trying to make yourself look busy. You're going to make sure you tell people that you're too busy to do all the things you need to do. You're going to run around 100 miles an hour. You're going to say yes to everything and buzz around. Um, all because that makes you look really critical and important. So sometimes it's just awareness that, you know, that's part of where we are our own worst enemies on some of that kind of stuff. Um, second thing, a lot of, uh, of these top, top third student leaders get really burnt out because they feel guilty saying no. Um, if someone asks them to do something, they can't separate the request from the person who's asking for it. So I can, my best friend can ask me if I want to go on vacation to Disney World, but if I really can't do it, it doesn't mean I don't love my best friend. It doesn't mean that um, I'm a bad friend. It just means that I can't go to Disney World. So um, we need to, we need to watch that. You know, it doesn't, just because your advisor asks you to do something, if you're immediately jumping to, well, I don't want to be a bad, you know, student leader. I don't want them to think less of me. I don't want them to not think of me for future opportunities, and that's why we're saying yes, then we're, we're going to burn ourselves out every time. Because whenever you want something done, who do you ask? You ask a busy person. And you have to sort of train the people around you to not keep dumping things on you. So um, other reasons why leaders burn out, um, because they say yes to things they don't care about very much. Um, they don't, they don't want to be mean, so they say, yes, oh yeah, I'll definitely come to your birthday party when they know full well they don't have the bandwidth to do it, and they just don't want to be mean. They don't have a good way of saying no. Um, another reason why people burn out is what I call PMS disease, petrified of missing something. Um, God, how many student leaders just say yes to everything, every party, every activity, every other organization's uh, event, because they're just so afraid that if they don't go, something cool is going to happen and they're going to miss out on that. Um, I don't really know how to tell people that you know life can't be lived like that, but um, that's, that's another reason. And finally, um, another reason why we burn out is because we have this whole culture of student leaders that all enable this behavior with one another. You know, like, oh my God, I'm going to so-and-so's function. You're going too, right? Like somehow we can't do anything alone. We always have to pull in other student leaders with us. So therefore, we've got a bunch of friends and, and people that we hang out with who are completely burnt out and stretched out. And we're not protecting each other and basically trying to uh, enable better behavior. So those are the reasons why I think a lot of people burn out. So what can you do about it? couple things, and again, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are things that come to me top of my mind. Um, choose the three or four things that really fill your bucket, that really make you feel good, the things you enjoy the most. If it's participating in intramurals, then, you know, try to say yes to more things with intramurals, but um, don't say yes to the things that you don't really like to do. I don't like parties. I do not like going to things late at night. That is just T.J. Sullivan, man. I just, I'm a morning person. By 10 o'clock at night, I am worthless. Um, and so I don't say yes to things where people want me to go out to clubs or do different things that are late at night because it's just not me. It just doesn't work. It's not that it wouldn't be fun. It's not that I don't like the people. It's just that that just doesn't do it for me, you know. Um, I don't go to live concerts. It's just not really my big thing, you know. So find out, you know, be honest with yourself. What do you like? What don't you like? And just say to people, hey, that's not my thing, but I'd like to do something else with you. Or how about this instead, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Next, find a way to say no. This is really critical for student leaders. You have to find a way to sort of like put a distance between the request and the yes, right? So when I was running a, a college speakers agency not so long ago, people would always say, hey, I want to talk to you about being a speaker, which is like a guaranteed way for someone to suck two hours of my time, right? And, and I didn't want to say no because I didn't want to discourage people, and I never was sure when I, I didn't want to say no to someone who might be the next great speaker, right? 
But I had to do something so that every single person couldn't have access to me on that. So what I would say is, all right, I'm going to send you a questionnaire, and it's going to take you like 20 or 30 minutes to get through it, and I want you to do that first and let me read your responses, and then I'll come back to you and we'll discuss it, right? I'd put like a step on them, right? Or I'd say to somebody like, um, uh, send me an email. Oh, TJ, I want to talk to you about this idea I have, and I'd say, awesome. I'd love, you know, sounds good. I'd love to make that time. But why don't you send me an email and answer these three critical questions for me so I can understand what you're talking about ahead of time and I can kind of think about it prior to us talking. Sometimes when you put that step on somebody, you know, like, oh, well, would you would you like to be on a committee? And you say, maybe, I'd like to look at it, but why don't you send me an email and tell me what the mission of the committee is and how often it's going to meet and what are the outcomes we're looking for. And then I'll look at that and I'll get back to you. A lot of times you'll get people to like go away because they don't want to take the time to actually you know, give you the good information. And sometimes it's sort of a screening method, but if you give people uh, that opportunity and they actually do reply and they give you something thoughtful, well, then you know that this person's going to be worth your time, right? So um, put that step between the ask and the yes or no, and that helps a lot. Um, other things. Make sure you're scheduling uncommitted time for yourself. I have to do this all the time. Again, I'm a morning person, so for me, it's like, boy, my time between like 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. is like critical. That is mine. I don't get, nobody really wants that time for me, which is great. But um, I schedule that time for me. That's my workout time. That's my sit around, watch TV time. That's my whatever. Um, and that's really good for me. I write a lot in the mornings, so that's really big. Schedule that time for you. If, you're, if you know that everyone's bugging the crap out of you from 9 p.m. to midnight, well, that's not necessarily a good time to do it. Maybe you need to block off that time from 4 in the afternoon till 7 or whatever, you know. So block that time off for yourself and then give yourself a break. Like, whatever you feel like doing those three hours, that's what you do. So um, that's really helpful. Um, schedule the time for the things you know you need. If you know you need to study for that accounting test on Thursday, go ahead and schedule and block off that time. And so when someone says, oh, can you come to this event on Wednesday night? You'll be like, eh, I can't because I, I, you know, I've got a study group. Just, I, I would lie. I would just say i got a study group. Even if it's just you in the library by yourself, uh, you are a group of one. So schedule that time. Um, other things. Um, make sure you tell your friends, those people closest to you, that they have permission to call you out when you're being this completely stretched out lunatic who says yes to everything. Um, tell your friends, if I'm not keeping commitments, if I'm not returning emails and phone calls, if I'm not meeting the expectations, um, oh, and by the way, like boyfriends, girlfriends are awesome for this because they are usually the ones that are most willing to do that. And you got to give them permission. Like, let me know when I'm being a crappy boyfriend um, or a crappy girlfriend or whatever. Um, give those people permission, and then when they do it, you respect them for doing that, and you listen and you adjust it, right? Um, so that's important. And one more strategy I would give you to help avoid burnout and overcommitment is um, stop identifying by how cool, stop trying to be cool by how busy you are. You know, um, you got your position, you're, you're important, you're critical. Like, if you're, you're not impressing anybody by telling everybody how busy you are all the time. It just, what you're telling people is, I don't have time for you. Um, so it's much more impressive when a person you perceive as busy actually takes time and talks to you. You know, I get that from people all the time. People, when I remember someone's name, which is not all the time, when I remember someone's name or I talk to them or I remember something we talked about a previous time, they say, oh my God, you meet so many people. I can't believe you remembered that. And why wouldn't I remember that? That's, a, you know, that's important to me that I remember those things. So, um, you will make people more impressed with you as a leader when you actually do take the time and when you sit and have a conversation and you put your phone away and you really focus on them or you say, you know what, today sucks, but how about Friday afternoon? I got, a little, I got some time, I got an hour. How about you and I just put the phones away and we walk and talk and we catch up a little bit? Make the time for the things that are important. Um, learn to say a polite no to the things that are not. And uh, stop trying to be cool by being the most critically, you know, vital, running around with your chicken head cut off person on campus. And, uh, and, and as, as student leaders, call each other out when you're being like that. When you're being like that, call each other out. Uh, and maybe that'll help a little bit with the burnout. So anyway, tune into the E20 podcast. It's my new project. E20, go on your uh, iPhone, hit that little podcast uh, logo, and search for the E20 podcast. That's my new project. And I'd love for you to check it out. Subscribe. Please subscribe. And if you like it, give it a good review on iTunes. That would be awesome. So hope you're having a great day. And we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks.